Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking it up from this topic of trigonometry, and the question also involves some concepts from geometry as well. And if I talk about this, we are continuing our series of questions on JEE Advanced. So today's question, we have taken it up from the year 2010. And if I talk about the question here, it is told to us that there is a circle and there are two parallel chords of a circle. So these are the two parallel chords of a circle. And we have also been given that this parallel chords of a circle which are present, they are at a distance of three plus one. So if I see this, this distance which is given to us between the two parallel chords is nothing but root 3 plus 1. So we have been given these two parallel chords are at a distance of root 3 plus 1. And if I talk about this radius of the circle, that is given to us as two units. So on both sides, if I join the center of the circle with the circumference, I get this radius as two units. And we already know if I join the line from the center of circle to the chord, and if that's perpendicular, it bisects the chord. So if I take this, this becomes perpendicular. We have also been told that this chords subtend at the center the angles of pi by k and 2 pi by k. So these are the angles which are subtended. 2 pi by k dot 3. So 2 pi by k and pi by k are the angles which are subtended at the center of the circle. And we have also been given that k is greater than 0. We have been asked to find the value of this expression. So k inside the square bracket. If you know k inside the square bracket is nothing but the greatest integer function. And this greatest integer function, if you talk about, basically it means you have to find the value of the integer which is lesser than or equal to k. So you need to find the greatest integer which is lesser than or equal to the value of k, whatever you get here. So let's try to find the value of k first and then we'll find the greatest integer function for k. So if I see here, if I name this vertices, so let's say center of circle is O, this point is B, this point is Q, quad A, B and C, D are parallel to each other. So if I have quad A, B and C, D parallel to each other, now if I talk about this being a right angle triangle, I can apply trigonometric ratios in this triangle. So in triangle OAQ. If I talk about this, I get this as, I can apply here, I want to know this side OQ and I have been given hypotenuse that is true. So this is nothing but an adjacent side to the angle 2 pi by k. So I can write that as cos theta or cos of 2 pi by k is nothing but adjacent which is OQ upon 2 which is the hypotenuse or the radius of the circle. So OQ becomes 2 times cos of 2 pi by k. In triangle OAP if I apply the same trigonometric ratio I get again cos of theta that is pi by k here is equal to OP by 2. Right? So in triangle OA not OAP it is OC. So if I write that triangle OCP, triangle OCP, we are getting cos of pi by k is OP, which is adjacent side upon OC, OC is 2 here. So you get again OP also as 2 times cos of pi by k. 
Now we have to find the value of k, but let's try to make our equation easier. So to make that easier, what we'll put here is let's put pi by k as some angle theta. Once we'll find the value of theta, we'll just resubstitute it and solve. So you get this as two cos of two theta, and this becomes two cos of theta. So we have OP and OQ with us. Now once you have OP, once you have OQ, if you add them, you get this total side as PQ, which is root three plus one. So if you apply that, PQ is P plus OQ. PQ is given to me as root three plus one. OP is also given to me two cos theta. And OQ is also given to me as two. Now we already know cos of double angle that is cos 2 theta is nothing but 2 cos squared theta minus 2. So if I use this idea of double angle to solve our equation, I get this as becoming root 3 plus 1. 2 I can take out common, you are left with cos theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Take these two on the other side. Take that as 3 plus 1. Up. That is equal to cos theta plus 2 cos squared theta. If you try to solve this expression, you get that. So 3 plus 1 by 2. If I take that minus 1 also on the other side, it becomes plus 1. And you are left with cos theta plus 2 cos squared theta. So now if I try to solve this, you get this as root 3 plus 1 plus 2 into 1, which is 2, on 2 is equal to cos theta plus 2 cos squared. If I take everything on the one side, you get this is 2 cos squared theta plus cos theta. And this becomes root 3 plus 3 by 2. If I take it on the other side, it becomes minus root 3 plus 3 by 2 is equal to 0. Now, once you have this quadratic equation, you just need to solve this. If I compare this with if first of all, to understand this quadratic, let's also substitute this cos theta as well. So it becomes easier for us to understand even better. So if I substitute here, let's say cos theta is t. So this becomes 2 t square plus t minus 3 plus root 3 upon is equal to 0. So if I compare this given a quadratic equation with ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. You get this becoming a is 2, b is 1, c is minus of 3 plus 3, 1. So you have a, b, c now. Once you get a, b, c, you can just find the values of x here. In this case, it is t because our quadratic equations in Equation is in terms of t. That is minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. That makes it minus 1 plus minus 1 square, that's 1, minus 4, a is 2, c is minus of 3 plus root 3 upon 2. So if you see here, this 2, 2 gets cancelled, minus into minus becomes plus upon 2a, a here is nothing but 2. So you get this becoming minus 1 plus minus. This becomes 1 plus 4 into 3 plus upon 2. If I try to solve this further, you get this t becoming minus 1 plus minus 2. This becomes 1 plus 12 plus 4 root 3 upon 4. This becomes minus 1 plus minus. 1 I can write as 1 square. 12 I can write as 2 root 3 square. Because 2 root 3, if you see, it is 2 in 2 square is 4 and 2 root 3 square is 3. So 4 into 3 becomes 12. And 4 root 3, which is present here, I can write that as 2 times 1 into 2. So 2 into A into B. Now, if I solve this, I get this is minus 1 plus minus a square plus 2ab plus b square. That is nothing but a plus b the whole square. 
square and square root gets cancelled and you can take that entire expression out of the bracket that gives you minus 1 plus minus 2 root 3 plus 1 upon 4. If you solve this, you get this as minus 1 plus 2 root 3 plus 1 upon 4 or minus 1 minus 2 root 3 minus 1. So if you solve this further, you get this and this cancelled out. 2 1s are 2 twos are get this t as root 3 by 2 or here if you solve this you get minus 2 minus 2 root 3 upon 4 minus 2 taken common you get 1 plus root 3 upon 4 2 and 4 gets cancelled you get minus 1 plus root 3 so two values now once I got t I can resubstitute it as cos theta. So instead of t, now I'm just writing cos theta that's equal to 2, 3 by 2, or I get this as minus 1 by 2 into 1 plus. Now we already know one idea root 3 by 2 is nothing but 1.732 by 2. That's less than 1 because of this 0.866. So this actually becomes 0.866. And if you see this value here, 1.732 plus 1, that is 2.732 divided by 1, divided by 2. So 2.732 divided by 2 becomes somewhere minus 1.366. So you get this as the value of cos theta. But we already know that cos theta Maximum value it can be equal to 1, minimum value can be minus 1. It cannot be beyond 1 and minus 1. Right? So this value of cos theta is not feasible. So basically this value is rejected. Because I cannot have this value for cos theta. So I have only one value satisfying this, that is cos theta is root 3 by 2. And when do you get cos theta is root 3 by 2? When it is equal to cos of 30 degree. That is cos of pi by 6. So from here I understand theta is nothing but pi by 6. But we don't need value for theta, right? We substituted theta also as something. So we substituted pi by k as theta. We substituted pi by k as theta. So let's substitute theta as pi by k. So we substituted. Theta as pi by k. If and we substitute this and equate it with this, you get pi by k. Six pi pi cancels. You get k is six. So we get the answer for the k now, which was asked to us to find out. And there were four options also given to us. Let's see them. So we were asked to find the greatest integer function for k. We just got the value for k. And greatest integer function means you need to find the greatest integer which is lesser than or equal to k. So answer for the greatest integer function comes out 6. You had four options as a2, b3, c4 and d6. So if you find the correct answer that matches your with the question is this question. So d is the correct answer for the question. The greatest integer function for k that was asked to us. That comes out to become 6. So you just have to apply trigonometric ratios and then you just have to solve this quadratic equation that gave you the value of theta as 5 by 6. When you resubstitute theta as 5 by k, you got the value of k as 6. And then you just found out the greatest integer function that is 6. So this is the answer and the option that matches you with the correct answer. Is. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions which combine all the concepts of trigonometry, geometry, quadratic equations, substitutions. So you get the answer for the greatest integer function here. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. Till then, you can like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, do share these videos with your friends who are also involved in the preparation of JWE. Thank you.